welcome from beautiful Dalzell Field in Dubuque. The finale of the regular season, week nine, Muscatine making the trip up to the Key City to face Dubuque Senior. The Rams come in just one in seven on the year. That one win last week, the Muskies looking to finish the season above 500. Hello, everyone. I'm Roland Glenbine, as always, alongside uh, Chris Anderson, and the playoff hopes are on life support, but they are there, and uh, we'll talk about this game in a minute, but first, uh, the Dubuque Senior Marching Band is on the field and about to play our national anthem here before tonight's game. tonight with the playing with, of our national anthem. Now, as we were saying, hello everyone, I'm Roland Glenbine, alongside Chris Anderson here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. And it has been uh, a roller coaster of a season, Chris. Probably not the season we had expected or at least hoped for, but uh, plenty of uh, lows and uh, some definite highs. And boy, was it a wild one last week. I, I don't even know how to describe the roller coaster this has been you know everybody came in we've got a strong senior class first drive of the game we lose two key components first offensive drive first game and then it just got crazier from there and to cap it off last week overtime pass interference two-point conversion who knows what actually happened i don't know it's going to be like the zap Ruder film they're going to be watching our footage for years to come at least probably in davenport north areas um, but we pulled it off, which is an amazing thing for a program that's trying to make that transition. It it was a lot of questionable officiating for sure, and uh, it was a wild ride. But in the end, yes, an overtime win. So that brings us to tonight. Now, uh, a chance to win, a chance to finish over five hundred, and we've talked about five and four is what you need to have a chance at the playoffs. And unfortunately, the, the strength of schedule is really putting us uh, uh, down a little bit. Here's what, here's what needs to happen tonight in order to make the playoffs next week. And, and it starts off, of course, winning tonight. There's six things you need. you got to win tonight. You, you need uh, a win. You need Iowa City West to lose. You need a Centennial to beat Urbandale. Now, all those three things feel pretty good about Right then, you need uh, Cedar Falls to beat Davenport West. It's in Davenport. That's kind of a coin flip, but I, if I had to uh, pick a team, I'd pick Cedar Falls to win it. I would agree. So okay, four four things that can happen. Now's where it gets a little hairy. You, you need, believe it or not, you need Cedar Rapids Jefferson to win tonight, 
over Iowa City Liberty. Now, Liberty is behind Muscatine in the standings, but their opponent's win-loss is so much higher that even though even if both teams win tonight, Liberty will jump ahead of Muscatine. So you, you really need Cedar Rapids-Jefferson to beat Liberty tonight. And the last thing and the hardest thing of all, and, and ugh, this is where <laughs> kind of the, the punch to the gut comes in, you need West Des Moines Valley to lose tonight to Marshalltown. And that's going to be the toughest of all the things that you just listed. Yes, and they're already Marshalltown's already losing seven nothing early in that ball game, and, and it, it's really tough because you needed Valley to lose one of their last two games. Last week they were losing last play of the game. They kicked a thirty-one yard field goal to beat Ankeny, and that really kind of uh, took the air out of the sails here as for the playoffs go. But mathematically, there there is a chance. So you're saying there's a chance? I, I am. And we'll keep our eye on it tonight, and, and who knows. Well, and again, you still have to take care of your business before any of that even matters, right? We've said that from the first game. You've said, how many games do we have to win, Roland? Five. I and said at least five. You know what? If we win five, okay, we needed to win six, right? And, yep. and you yep. never know how the playoffs are going to go. It's just what it is. So... It's the system, and it's not a great system. We'll talk about the system a little bit. I want to talk about the system a little bit as the night goes on. Maybe halftime, who knows how this game goes. It's not. It's a flawed system. It's a system that really does kind of benefit some of the, the more traditional powers, and I'll explain why here as the night goes on. But we're about ready for football here, and the Muskies and senior Rams are on the field. Well, welcome to all the Muskie team fans around the country and and those from Dubuque as well tuning in tonight to watch senior night here for the uh, senior Rams and the Rams will kick things off the start the boot is up and it will be returnable Thompson has a chance from his 10 yard line looks for a hole has a has a first hole can't get by the second line of defense though and the Muskies will start off tonight from the 24 yard line The Rams feeling good about themselves, picking up their first win of the season last week over Cedar Rapids, Washington, a 10 to nothing victory. It's been uh, the lone bright spot in what has been a long season for this a senior team. And the Muskies will start off in a wing formation and fumble the ball. That is not the way to get going. I think the Rams have it. We'll wait for the official and yep. I don't think we need the official. I think the 11 Rams jumping up and down kind of told us what was going on. So not the way to start the night. First play from scrimmage, and it's a bad quarterback center exchange. And the Rams, like we said, feeling good about themselves, now carry some momentum into this game, getting the first turnover on the very first play. Rams are led by Dalen Moore, quarterback. Throwing for uh, just over a thousand yards on the season. Always like when, uh, as, as a Packer fan, you always like when a quarterback wears number four. I wouldn't know. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't know. We can talk Michigan football tonight too, if you want. We we can talk Michigan football all oh, night long. Oh boy, yeah, <laughs> nothing to talk about there, huh? All right, so five-yard penalty. Scouting. Yeah. Scouting your opponent sounds like a good thing to do to me. Here's a little quarterback uh, oh to boy. running back, back to quarterback. Trickery, and it leads to the touchdown. Dalen Moore scores for the Rams. Well, on the positive side, we've already started our 50-state bingo. We've got <laughs> Sue from Florida and Kevin from Maryland watching with us. So, folks, if you're watching from anywhere in the country, throw it on Facebook, throw it on YouTube, let us know where you're watching from. In the meantime, the Rams will... Well, how about that call out of the gate? Halfback option pass, throw back to the quarterback. We got a flag down on the extra point. And this is, you know, in reality, this is the Rams' playoff game. They got nothing uh, postseason hopes, so they're going out here tonight. 
No sense leaving any play in the playbook. Throw it all out tonight and uh, see what can happen. And boy, they have started on the right foot this evening. That's a call of a coach looking to go out and win a game. Head coach Daryl or DJ Moore in his second year, year here at senior high. Left footed kicker puts the ball through the uprights. And uh, Eli Callahan adds the extra point. And it's the Rams off to the early 7 nothing lead. Looking at the tail of the tape a little bit tonight between these two schools. We didn't get a chance to really touch on that in the pregame show. Muscatine has uh, thrown the ball, attempted 32 times, 10 of those 32 coming last week, mind you. Four uh, in a row, as a matter of fact. Yeah, craziness. 183 yards on the season. The uh, Rams coming in with just over 1,000 yards passing uh, on 78 of 141 attempts. Eight touchdowns through the air, now nine against four interceptions. The Muskies have neither of each. Muskies have run the ball 373 times for just over 2,100 yards. Senior has 800 yards on the ground. And that gives your tail of the tape tonight. Now the Muskies go right back out on the field trying to get a drive that goes at least more than one play, right? I'd like to finish one. Or just return the kick. Still waiting for that this year. Here is Darnell's a good returnable for kick. Darnell back at the uh, two-yard line. Has to beat a man. He does. Needs the corner. He might have it. Got to get around that corner out to the 30, and uh, he'll be brought down there. Exciting return and not bad field position here for the Muskies across the 30-yard line. It's exciting every time he gets the ball. It, it is. It's... I'm honestly I'm surprised he hasn't broken one yet. Speaking of, like to see him maybe get the ball a little bit on offense as well. Well, if they go into passing mode, there's a real possibility. Yeah, look, come out here in the wishbone formation now. Turn the give and not a bad pick up there for Brooke Hart. About eight yards on the carry. Gavin sets up a second down and two. And a quick no huddle look here. They go right back to the exact same play. And Brooke Hart picks up three, and that's enough to move the chains. Just a beautiful facility for fans that have had not had a chance to come up here and watch a game in the last decade or so since they remodeled here. And they're, they're, they're constantly remodeling here. It's just a, a gem of a facility up here in the Key City. I believe the Muskies will return next year to play Hempstead. Here's Cooper. Yao breaking free up the middle. Yao to the 30. Got to beat one man to the 20, to the 15, 10, 5. Reaching at the pylon. Do they give it to him? They do. Touchdown, Muskies. Cooper Yao. And I'm going to kill the replay system right now. 58 yards for Cooper Yao. And the Muskies have a chance to tie things up. Ball is down, the kick is up, the extra point is good. Cesar Garrido on the extra point, and we'll uh, have That to would mean Mr. Jackson Othmer is not here for some reason, I'm assuming. That is very interesting. Now, we were not given any information as to why that is. Now, uh, I don't want to speculate, but Jackson Othmer was involved on that last play against Davenport North. He's the one that made the tackle on that kickoff return that led to a long 
uh, delay by the officials. A lot of numbers were written down. Now, the officials never told the press box if there were any, uh, any ejections. Again, the fine crew working last week, you would think you would tell the press box what was going on. At least the official scorers should know that. They w were never notified. So we do not know if that might be the case. Uh, I have been informed that a couple of Davenport North players are not playing tonight because they were ejected last week. So that is something we're looking into, and we'll uh, give you that information as soon as we can. But Jackson Othmer definitely not here tonight, and that is one theory as to why. Cesar Garrido will kick it off. It is a, a short returnable kick and a little reverse action to the 15-yard line, and uh, the coverage is there to uh, finally put a stop at of things at the 23-yard line. It's 10.35 to go here in uh, quarter number one. Both teams getting on the scoreboard early tonight. First quarters have been the best quarter for the Muskies scoring-wise. They've got 68 points on the board in the first quarter this season. Little jet sweep action now reversing it back towards the middle of the field. And out to the 30-yard line is uh, Me Call. Camden Furness on the tackle. Second down in four upcoming for the Rams. Back to throw. Moore, Moore steps up now. Moore rolls out, still looking downfield. Now will keep it on the ground and get close to a first down, depending on the spot. Looks to be right at the sticks. Officials decide it's close enough. First down, Rams. Out of the pistol, Moore will give off right up the middle and a nice pickup by Noah Rowling. That's their top back on the season. 554 yards coming into this game. Number nine, Rowling. They'll go no huddle now and go right back to Rowling. Looks like the same play and this one stopped after a pickup of two yards. I did just speak with uh, a member of the athletic department. They weren't aware of anything, but I don't know. I haven't heard from the athletic director or anybody else from the school. So um, at this point, again, we have no idea where our kicker is. More back to throw was we'll swinging out to me call. He has a first down and more down the sidelines. Out of bounds around the 35-yard line. Sawyer Zek credited with the tackle. And again, rolling up the middle, rolling rolling his way to another first down for the senior Rams down to the 25 yard line. So Roland, if you don't have one of your starting defensive backs and one of the best kickers in the state, assuming this wasn't a game time decision, injury, something of that nature, how would this have changed your game plan coming into this? And there's rolling again on the ground uh, out to about the 20 yard line. Well, you know, it, it, it really depends on when they knew, right? If there was an ejection and they knew about this all week coming in, then they could prepare for it. 
if it's an illness, uh, that kind of thing, then it really kind of hampers you a, a little bit more. And there's uh, some movement up front and a free five yards coming against the Muskies. It, it definitely makes things tougher. There's no doubt about it. You got, I mean, you, you, Cesar made the extra point, but you're losing a guy who can put the ball into the end zone on every kickoff, so. Field position will come into play tonight for sure. Back to throw, more slant over the middle, over the head of the intended receiver. No good. Timing pattern there, just a little bit high by Dalen Moore. Here's a run up the middle, rolling down around the five yard line. So the Rams offense is in fa intact. In fact, rolling right down the field is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to be cute with words. We'll, and we'll get happens, there eventually. Right? That's my job is to stutter over my tongue. Here's rolling, trying the right end. Good job by the defense there. Gavin Brookhart led the way. Cooper Yao there also on the tackle. And a second down and goal upcoming now for the Rams as we are counting down towards the midway point of this first quarter. Moore gives it off up the middle again and again. The defense answers the call. Third down upcoming. Ball down at the one yard line. So big play up coming here by the defense. And the Rams uh, get the ball into the end zone and the Rams scoring again. Looks like it's rolling again. And we have a bit of a shootout early on. So uh, we do have some confirmation on the Jackson Othmer situation it turns out he was ejected last week during that uh, final kickoff there was players left the bench for north uh, I didn't really see anybody leave the bench for uh, Muscatine as the extra point is good however there were definitely flags thrown both ways there was an altercation on the field it, it wasn't pretty and you figured somebody from our side had to get caught up on it and Jackson Othmer was right in the middle of it as he was the the man who made the tackle and, and really it was a game-saving tackle at that point. North was very close to returning that kickoff with just .8 seconds to go. So I uh, want to thank our sources and uh, appreciate that information. As the Muskies are going without their five-star kicker tonight. And I, I haven't had a chance to look through the musky line over there to see if there's anybody else missing from that altercation, but if there were several North players, it may not be out of line to assume that there might be a couple of muskies missing. We saw the officials writing down a lot of numbers. Now, again, none of that was communicated, but I yeah. digress, and that's, you know, water down the river, but... Nonetheless, yes, we are playing a little catch up here. Apologize for that, folks, but that is what happened. So no Jackson Othmer tonight uh, on his, what could be his final game in a musky uniform. There's a squib kick. Falling on and good field position coming up here for the muskies.
sure that was an onside attempt or just a squib kick. But Jake Meyer was there to fall on it. And out come the Muskies trying to answer back. Wishbone set. Pitch to Brookhart. Brookhart tries the far end and picks up about three yards on the carry. Another carry up the middle and out to about the 45-yard line. Again, Brookhart getting a healthy dose of the carries here in this first quarter. So a third down, and we'll call it three yards upcoming for Muscatine. Wishbone set. Turn the give to Yao. Yao's got the first down. Yao running hard, still on his feet. Down around the 42-yard line. Cooper Yao, one of the unsung heroes of this. I mean, we've sung it a little bit, but he has really stepped up and had a, a nice season. Here's the turn of balls loose. Cooper Yao is there to save the day, falling on the fumble right at the 50-yard line. It could have been disastrous. Yao retains the possession, but now a second down in a very long upcoming for the Muskies. Called second and 18. 420 left here in this first quarter. Yet to throw a pass tonight. This could be a spot for it. Instead, the give to Yao. Yao's trying to sidestep the defender. He's brought down by Dalen Moore. Dalen Moore, the quarterback, making the tackle. That's another thing about this senior team. A lot like the Muskies, they have a lot of players that go both ways. So third down, you, you have to figure if you're going to put the ball up in the air, this might be the spot to do it. Third and 14. Not really a passing formation. We'll see what they do. Double tights, wishbone. The turn, the give to the first man through. A little hole, but not quite enough to move the sticks. Is Dayton Truesdale. Now you got a fourth down and uh, makeable. The ball at the 37. And the offense will stay out on the field. Fourth and five. They'll stay with that double tight wishbone. And now Coach Hawkins running out on the field to call the timeout. We'll take a quick break with them. We'll be right back here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas, has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break. 
Roland Glenn, I'm Chris Anderson back here in beautiful Dubuque. First quarter action, a huge play upcoming for the Muskies. Fourth down and five, trailing by seven early. Wishbone look, the turn, the pitch to Yao. Yao looks for some room. Yao still needs a few more. He's got it. Yao breaks free into the secondary down near the 20 yard line. First down, Muskies. Again, Yao picking up big yardage. And gives a new set of downs for a Muscatine. Little unbalanced line action here, and boy, there was some penetration. They got to Gage pretty early. He got the ball off, though, to Dayton Truesdale before that, and a nice pickup on the play of about six yards, second and four now upcoming. Again, same play up the middle, not as successful. Third down and three. Rams make some substitutions. We'll uh, check in on those scores when we get a second. And we're keeping our eye. There's six things this game has to go in the win column and five other games need to go the right way for the Muskies to play next week. There is a fumble. Well, just a bad exchange again. It looked like Curtis got tripped up by one of his teammates, lost the ball, and it went right into the hands of Dalen Moore. Second turnover of the night already in this first quarter for Muscatine. When you're playing, Chris, a team that's one and seven, you, you don't want to give them life early. I would think not. They've had a long year. You don't want to uh, give them anything to feel good about. And there's quarterback keeper, Dalen Moore, maybe two yards on the carry. I was expecting them to go into the jelly roll right there. Four receivers set. Throwing it deep over the middle. A chance to pick it. Oh, so close. Oh, wow. It looked like a couple of muskies may have distracted each other from the interception. Was that Darnell? It was. And Thompson had the best chance to pick that off and just could not corral it. That's one of those 50-50 plays we talk about every week. You gotta get more than 50% of the 50-50 plays if you wanna win some games. Third down and long, chance for the defense to get off the field right now and movement up mm -hmm. front, not a lot of movement. But this near side official saw enough to give a free five yards to the Rams. quick shout out we did also pick up some uh, Wisconsin Florida and Utah interviewing audience tonight. Well, we are very close to Wisconsin tonight I think we could see it if it was daylight I think we're facing the wrong direction but I get your point is that ball loose pick it up never know pick it up he does pick it up Cooper Yao trying to get into the end zone touchdown Musk Muskies there you go and now we got a flag coming after the score. Maybe some uh, too much celebration. But you know, that ball called a lateral, and you got to just pick it up. You, you would think that the Muskies would have learned that lesson from last week 
when they had the opportunity to pick up the ball that the referees never blew dead. On, on the blocked extra point, for, you were correct. I mean, it was probably, what, six minutes before something else happened. You play until the whistle. They tell you that in, in youth football league. You play until the whistle. You got that ball, you pick it up and score, and they'll tell you if you didn't. Yeah. Don't leave anything to chance. So we'll see what the flag was. Again, this uh, after the play. So the touchdown will count. I feel like my shouting almost convinced Cooper to pick it up there. <laughs> uh, you know, it may well have. <laughs> because we do know, based on Mr. Brookhart's uh, enthusiastic motivation of his team, we know we can hear things in the booth that they say. So it's very well possible. So it is excessive celebration. There will be no fun here tonight, folks. Cooper Yao, the touchdown, though, uh, we'll give him the pass on that. Go ahead and have fun, young man. Picked up a second in Florida. That doesn't help us on our path to 50, though. No. But, yeah, you like Florida. It, f it almost feels Florida-like tonight. It, it sort of kind of does. For week nine of the season, uh, you know, temperatures in the 50s at kickoff, mid-50s. Extra point is up and hits the crossbar. Did it get through? It did. Uh, oh, a positive uh, doink for uh, the Muskies. Th okay, so we've now <laughs> had two 50-50 plays go in our favor. Oh, wow, there you go. The tide is a turning, and we are tied up. 14 apiece, just 40 seconds left. We'll keep it here. We're so close to the end of the quarter. And, boy, the, the craziness continues from last week into tonight. <laughs> that ball barely snuck through after the doink. But that's, you know, when you step back to your second kicker who hops no. in and is, is doing a tremendous job. But, you know, this is why they always say calmer heads prevail, right? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Either would I, generally speaking. But, you know, speaking of the roller coaster of this season, that's been part of it. You know, these muskies have shown a lot of emotion throughout the season. And, you know, sometimes it's been good. Sometimes it's been a little bit tougher. So, you know... I think if we can maybe kind of mellow and drive from here, it should be good. You know what we got working tonight? Now this is interesting. Cooper Yao has scored an offensive touchdown. Ooh. He like scored a scoop and score defensive touchdown. touchdown. Now, can we get a, a kickoff or a punt? Re well, he's a kickoff returner. Can we get a kickoff return and have a special teams touchdown by Cooper Yao? Oh, that ball oh. nearly recovered. Like, there was only Ooh. one senior Ram paying attention up there, and that just happened to be where the ball bounced to as it was a line drive kick right off of one of the linemen up front. Now, was that an attempted squib kick, or do you think that was an attempted onside? I feel like it was an attempted squib kick to throw off the timing, especially seeing you're kicking 15 yards back. You wouldn't really onside kick. I, I wouldn't think so. No, I know. But it almost turned into one, so. Right. It, it just the craziness of the night. It would be uh, fitting that worked. Here's the give to Rowling. Rowling has nowhere to go this time as Cooper Yao trying to wrap up the player of the game here in the first quarter. Great penetration right I don't think he was touched as he went through the line I tell you not only is this a beautiful facility they are cooking something good and it is just <laughs> permeating right into the press box tonight we got the grills working and it smells delicious this will be the last play of the first quarter a little swing pass to a man who have fallen down and that's how this first quarter ends seems apropos after one, we're all tied up, 14-14. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. 
made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals, you're building the future. We're here to help. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. Back here in Dubuque starting the second quarter. Moore back to throw under some pressure, rolls out, still looking downfield, lets it fly, has his tight end wide open. A big play still on his feet inside the 20, down to about the 16 yard line. And Dalen Moore just kept that play alive with his feet and found Drew Francis for a big first down and a player slow to get up is rolling for Dubuque Sr. The trainers will head out onto the field and tend to him as we're early in this second quarter. Been a crazy game already here tonight. The Muskies need to win and they need to get a lot of help around the entire state of Iowa this evening. We'll check out uh, some scores here for you here. We fire up the old score machine. Piece of information you may want for your Again, you got to win this one, and you need a bunch of teams. You need Valley to lose. You need Davenport West to lose tonight. You need Urbandale to lose tonight. Is not here. As uh, Rowling is on his feet, that's nice to see, and he'll. Uh, gingerly walk off the field right now. Early uh, in the second quarter, Lindmar and Pleasant Valley are tied up, seven apiece. Cedar Rapids Prairie is helping out the cause. They're beating Iowa City West 14 to nothing. That's good news for Muskie fans. Just one of those other five games going the way here early. And Cedar Falls leads Davenport West 7 0 in the second quarter. That is another of the five games that need to go your way. So, two games going the right way. Here's Moore, gives off, somehow staying on his feet. The ball carrier there for the Rams. Picking up about five yards. So Coach Moore calling the play in to uh, I believe his son, Dalen Moore, little father's son here in a senior and back to throw is more little fade pattern looking uh, for the tight end Francis incomplete and third down and five now upcoming you're talking about the kicking game of senior Eli Callahan has a 67 percent success rate field goals this year he has made one from 41 so they're definitely in range right now for a field goal and I was just speaking with the Dubuque newspaper gentleman, and he said they are down to their second string kicker as well. Okay, so that is not Callahan. Thank uh, you for saying that. Well, that's my understanding at the moment. We'll want to confirm if they send out the kicking unit. But Thanks to the Telegraph Herald up here in yes. Dubuque. Fine newspaper. 
A run up the middle. They needed five. They got maybe a half yard. So fourth down upcoming now for senior. And we'll see how they want to handle this. Right now the offense staying out on the field. And, you know, these are the kind of changes to calls that you see when you don't have your first string kickers out there. Because I would imagine this is something that would have been a no-brainer. Very true. If you had Callahan, they'd be kicking right now. Instead, they're going to do some talking, and we're going to take uh, a break. We'll be right back here on the uh, Discover Muscatine Sports Network. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Muskie Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, senior we have a flag before that play got started figure out what this is all about here on a <laughs> fourth and four. Oh, folks I think I have just read the comment of the night comment of the season so far miss Karen Brookhart just commented. She is watching from Dubuque, Iowa at Dalzell. She's here in the stands watching and listening with us. Karen, thank you. Can we get her to wave? I, you there, know yeah, what? She, I think they're waving. There we go. They are, <laughs> I'll bet. There we go. There we go. It is time to break out a fan cam. <laughs> <laughs> So the penalty, five yards uh, on the Rams. That will make this a much harder fourth down. We'll see if they're going to stay with the offense or go special teams here. Coach DJ Moore not pleased with that flag. A little slow to get this play in. A lot of confusion right now for this Dubuque senior team. Fourth and nine play clock already down to 12 seconds. They might have to burn a timeout. They run up now in six seconds. They gotta get this play. They're not gonna get this playoff. And uh, the Rams are going to indeed burn yet another timeout. They're down to one in this first half. They're not quite sure how they want to handle this right now. A big play upcoming, fourth and nine. Ball on the 16-yard line in what is a tie ball game. So before the penalty, they were going to go quarterback keeper with Dalen Moore trying the right side. Of course, that got wiped out. And we'll see what they uh, try now, five yards farther back. Man comes split off towards the bottom of your screen. Two split off towards the top. Moore's going to throw the fade. Has a man out there. Incomplete. Just a little too far, and the Muskie defense holds.
So the fumble does not cost the Muskies any points, and they get to come back out on the field now and try to take their first lead of the night. 85 yards away from pay dirt. Come out in a wing formation. And now they'll switch everything up. Senior stays put. Give up the middle, Truesdale. Truesdale can't escape the ankle tackle. Gets only about a yard on the play. So second down and long for the Muskies. And that's not good. Curtis and Truesdale run into each other. Quarterback tackling his own running back and the craziness of the evening continues. Third down and 13 now coming for the Muskies. We'll see if they put the ball up in the air for the first time. Still, there's the give and not a whole lot there and it will be a punting situation upcoming for a Muscatine. So a team that looked to have found their passing game last week, uh, reluctant to put the ball in the air tonight, perplexing. And they'll have to punt, basically standing on their own goal line. Kick gets away, Garrido, and it gets a beautiful bounce all the way into Ram territory, down to about the 42-yard uh, line. Nice job there. That's the problem when you lose Jackson Oath, where you not only lose your kicker, you lose your punter. Again, if you're just joining us tonight, Jackson uh, not here. He did get ejected last week on that last play of regulation. If you remember that long kickoff return with .8 seconds left by Davenport North. Othmer, the last line of defense, made the tackle. Flags were thrown. Uh, the bench for Davenport North cleared. A lot of shoving going on. There were uh, a couple ejections on the north side, and it turns out Jackson Othmer also ejected on that play. And now here's some late hits. A man down on the uh, senior sideline. Late flags, and we we're talking about some tempers last week. There's a little bit of uh, temperament issues right there tonight. And it also, just looking back to last week, we didn't know at the time, again, that Othmer was ejected because the officials, as I have said several times, I'm still mad about it, didn't bother relaying any information to anybody upstairs. But that also explains why Muscatine went for two when they scored in overtime. With Othmer out, it makes a lot more sense now. They, they had the ball first, scored, and went for two. Somehow credited with the two point conversion, unsportsmanlike penalty on Muscatine. And that turned out to be big because North did not have the answer on their own two point conversion. So, again, the Muskie defense kind of back on their heels here. The ball. At the 31-yard line, the Rams moving it once again thanks to the big penalty. And it's, it's about time uh, that the Rams turn the ball over, I feel. No go trips to the top of your screen. Moore back to throw. Moore looking for that fade again. Has a man out there. Nice job by Aiden Lopez blocking uh, that receiver's Path to the ball, great deflection there by Lopez, saves the day. Yeah. 
Marshawn Dukes, the intended receiver. He's their deep threat. Had a step on Lopez. Nice recovery, though. Aiden to knock that one down. Second down and 10 now. Again, three receiver set. Out of the pistol more. This is a quarterback keeper all the way. Tries the short side of the field. Knocked out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. That will bring up about a third and three for the Rams. Uh, score out of Urbandale tonight. Centennial is beating Urbandale 28 to nothing. So that piece of the puzzle looks like it's in the back pocket. Needed Urbandale to lose tonight, and Centennial is helping out the Muskies winning 28 to nothing. And we got a fourth down upcoming again for Senior, and again, they'll keep their offense on the field. Cedar Falls is beating Davenport West 23 to nothing. So there's the second piece of the puzzle. Kind of in the back pocket. We weren't really worried about those two. I'm scared to look at the score right now in Marshalltown. We'll, we'll look at that here in a minute. Owen McCormick just uh, piped up that uh, Liberty is leading Jefferson 14 nothing. And that we need to go the other way. Yes. So, Amongst other things. Yeah. Ball start on fourth and one. Big, big penalty against the Rams. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got a score out of Marshalltown at halftime. Valley 42, Marshalltown 0. Well then. It's probably going to be the last night of the season. There's the pass. It's too high for the receiver, and the Muskies will get the ball back. I tell you, if everything else goes that way, and that's the one, that is, is going to be disappointing. Quick shout out to the student section over there making the trip all the way up here to Dubuque. Decked out in, I'm guessing it's camo night tonight. Either that or they pick the wrong color to try and blend in with the bright silver metal bleachers. So out comes the offense and it's been a, a bit of a struggle on offense tonight for this musky team. And back to throw for the first time. Curtis lets it fly deep, throws it up for grabs, and it looks to be intercepted right at midfield. We do have a flag on the field, however, back at the line of scrimmage. Yep. Lawler with the interception. We'll uh, check on the flag. So ineligible man downfield on the Muskies. They'll decline, decline that, and it will be yet another turnover tonight on Muscatine, their third already in this game. You know, so as you come up to half, you've had three turnovers. You're still in a tie ball game. Does that make you excited as a coach? I, I no, you're pulling your hair out because you're shooting yourself in the foot. And... But well, something's got to be going right if you've turned the ball over three times and you're still only a tie ball game, right? You, you've had a scoop and score, so they've turned it over once as well, and you had a, a couple of fourth down stops. So the defense is actually playing fairly well right now. It's the offense that needs to get things going. And here's Dylan, or excuse me, Dalen Moore. A big run by the quarterback. And Cooper Yow a little slow to get up. He does, though. I feel like the uh, defense has spent uh, the majority of this first half on the field tonight. We don't have the time of possession stat available to us, but 
it's got to be pretty one-sided right now for the Rams. Seven and a half to go second quarter. Moore will keep it and runs into a wall, bounces off and picks up another yard. Andy Frankie on the tackle for Muscatine. Brings up a second down and long. And again, they'll send a couple of receivers in each direction as Moore out of the pistol. Movement up front. Not sure how that was in a flag. That's about what the first yeah. one they threw was. Plenty of time still on the play clock. Moore. We'll throw one out here into the flat and brought down right away at the 35-yard line. Drew Francis on that catch. Camden Furnace with a stop on that. Another one of our musky seniors. It's a couple tackles at least tonight for Furnace. Play clock down to five. Moore rolls out, looking to throw under pressure, and it's over the head of the intended receiver, Andrew Thiessen. So again, another chance here for this musky defense to hold third down, or excuse me, fourth down and eight upcoming. And it looks like they will uh, punt it away. Alex Croft on to punt. A lineman coming out late here. Still 10 seconds, though. They got time. High snap, pull down Croft. Quick kick going for the corner. Going to bounce and uh, rolls right into the coffin. Alex Croft does it how they teach you down at the three yard line and a long field upcoming now for the Muskies. Well, we're playing tonight at uh, Dalzell Field in Dubuque, named after longtime Ram coach Wilbur Dalzell. Coached here back in the 1920s and 30s and one of his players Jay Baywinger won the uh, first ever Heisman Trophy. Burwinger, sorry, Jay Burwinger, first ever Heisman Trophy. You know, that would probably be why there is a statue of him out in front of the stadium. There, There is the, yes, and there's a nice carry out there staying on the feet is Cooper Yao. There is the Heisman replica out there upon the uh Trying to figure out what direction I'm looking at here. During the main entrance, we'll just call yep. it that. The nice little promenade area. East. I believe that's the east entrance. Yes. Jay Berwinger. He played for the uh, University of Chicago back when they were a member of the Big Ten. That's a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But you never know. Give it another year or two, they might be back. And there's the catch made by Cooper. Yao needs to turn the corner. Nice gain right there. And the passing game is alive and well. Yes, the first ever Heisman was not as celebrated back then. It was given to the uh, best college football player east of the Mississippi at that time. Little history lesson for you tonight. On I, I, you know, Muskie I feel football. like I've heard that before. Yeah? Yeah. I would have never remembered it, but. That sounds like a Joel Krausar kind of a thing. So quick shout out to Joel. Uh, Encyclopedia of all knowledge. As he would say, probably useless knowledge, but that actually it is usually pretty useful. Cooper Yao brought down in the backfield again. A little slow to get up. That is one young man you do not want to lose. Having a, a heck of a game tonight already. Two touchdowns, one on offense, one on defense. And you know, Cooper has had a, kind of a unique season as 
Ty went down in those first couple games, Cooper was one that they leaned on, like at Iowa City West and a couple other places. And, you know, as Ty came back, his touches came down. But he's done a great job of stepping up every time the Muskies have needed him, whether it's on offense or defense. That Curtis throw deflected, goes incomplete. You can't say enough what the young man has done this year. The team, the team, the team, the team. So third and 16. Not a lot of plays in this playbook for this kind of situation. Look out of the wing formation. Receiver comes all the way down on the bottom of your screen. And a little reverse play to Cooper. This has worked in the past, but the Rams were ready for it. And that double handoff does not work this time. Fourth down, and out comes Garrido in the uh, punting unit. You know, and that's the tough thing about plays like that. You know, they've been using that since uh, Iowa City West. I think it was the first time Cooper really broke it. If you're going to have those types of plays, you're going to need to have more than one or two of them in the arsenal that you can go to. Oh, Grado fumbles it, somehow gets the kick away, needs the ground ball to work, and it's oh, working Mike. pretty well right now. <laughs> That's officially the third 50-50 play to go in the Muskies' favor. Oh, tonight. my goodness, the fire drill. That wasn't even a 50-50 play. That was that was like a 25-75. That was a Houdini act right there by Cesar. And uh, turns out to be a heck of a punt. You could, you could feel the panic in the young man's heart right there all the way up here in the press box. And, and I was afraid when he was starting to kick, it looked like it might have been spraying out over towards the stands. He, he, was, didn't look like, he was facing yeah, so the, the away stands. I, I'm going to go out on a limb. Could somebody help us on this? Does Garrido have any soccer experience? Because I'm going to bet money he does. Yeah, you're not going to find anyone to bet against that. What he just pulled off there, there's no doubt about it. Here's a little jet sweep action. Me call, going nowhere. Thompson on the tackle, back inside the 30, loss on the play. So yeah, if you're just watching us, the. This is such a beautiful facility. Unfortunately, the way our cameras are pointed doesn't really do it justice. I mean, it's a nice away stand, but it's nothing there. But the home stands just have a lot of character, and it's been really well done and constructed, and there's a lot of charm here. And an elevator. There, there they is have an, an elevator. elevator now, yes. And uh, again, the defense is there to stop that one right at the line of scrimmage, third and 11 now upcoming. I remember working here in Dubuque for uh, KWWL back in the day, and this field was not like this. It was grass. It was uh, this constructed side was not. And they have spent a lot of money, and it has been just well done here in the city of Dubuque. Well, and, and it's shared between three entities, is it not? A uh, long drive carry right there inside the 50-yard line. Nice run. Uh, honestly, it is shared by two, I believe. I, I Last I remember, Dubuque Wallert now plays their games over at Loris. Got it. Now I it, was close. Yeah, No, they, they used to play here. All three schools used to play at this facility, but I think – Wallert moved over to Loris a few years ago. Of course, Dubuque Wallert, the uh, Catholic high school here in Dubuque. Brookhart with a stop on that one. Well, we had a real offensive first quarter. Defense has taken over here in quarter number two. Interesting fact for those betting. 
<laughs> we do not encourage that, but here's the throw by Moore. And looks like it bounced. Incomplete, it did. Go ahead. Mr. Garrido has played soccer. There we go. And will be going to basic training for the National Guard after school and plans to go on to Iowa State to pursue engineering. There you go. That is a great engineering school. So uh, that young man's got a heck of a future and, and had a heck of a kick. And, and just to, again, emphasize we do not encourage gambling here on the program. I don't. I don't want to speak for you. If it's, if it's legal, that's all I'm going to say. Moore on the keeper. Moore has the first down. How is the Muskie soccer program looking for this uh, upcoming spring? I feel like they had, they had a decent they, year the other year, did they not? They do. You know, and actually, uh, both the boys and girls teams are kind of like consistently – improving like you can see the coaches have got a culture built they've got uh, a lot of buy-in from the feeder programs on both sides of the ball and they're it's kind of getting into that reload era mm -hmm. versus you know the up and down swings based on athletes Andrew Tyson on the catch for the Rams Well, they haven't had the state tournament here in, in a long, long time now. But still, I think a lot of these kids still grew up when it was the state tournament. And I think that, that helps a community, having that in your backyard and, and gaining interest from the youth playing that sport. And there's some moves right oh there my. by Moore. Dalen down to the 10. And that was all Dalen Moore right there. We'll see if our cameraman can keep track of him through this whole run for you. And again, we would like to uh, warmly welcome the Dubuque senior fans that are watching because their uh, automated system is on the fritz. Glad to be able to provide the service for you. Yeah, hopefully they're tolerating us. <laughs> I, I did warn their athletic director that we're unique, unique, unique announcers. Well, there you go. That's one word for it, right? Timeout call. That's the final timeout by Senior as we are, are reaching the end of this first half. And what has uh, been a really weird first half of football for sure. An offensive like explosion in in the first quarter. Well, I guess if you want to count a scoop and score as well in there. A scoring explosion. There you go. Scoring explosion. But the, the breaks have definitely been put on here. In quarter number two, but uh, an exciting game for you nonetheless. We're tied up 14 apiece in the uh, season finale. It looks like the season finale for both these teams, unless Marshalltown can really do the unthinkable and come back from 40-plus points down. You know, and, and at halftime, I do want to talk a little bit about the system that's in place and, and how it needs to be tweaked. Because uh, right now, and we'll wait till after this play, second and eight, or second and goal, I guess. Man goes in motion. It's a lateral pass, and Gavin Brookhart is there to lay the hammer down. They got to hurry. Clock down to five seconds. No timeouts. Down to three, down to two. They'll spike it with 1.4 seconds remaining. That was a risky play right there by Senior, not throwing the ball in the end zone. And out comes the field goal unit now, it looks like, to try to take the lead on this final play of the first half. And as we mentioned, both teams without their starting kickers. So this isn't the automatic three points that you might expect. Eli Callahan, their normal kicker. Not able to go tonight. Now Moore, quarterback, is the holder. Well, 
Huskies do have a timeout if they want to freeze them. And it looks like they do. So, well, there you go. Pointed the wrong direction, but it is a timeout by the Muskies. Just uh, you have a backup kicker out there. Why not make him think about it a little bit? Especially since you got one to burn. Can't spend him at high V. You, you can't, but I wait till the day that you can, right? You Although probably, you probably couldn't buy much with right now. You go to high V or any food store, you well, can't buy a whole lot anymore. Uh, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess Mr. Schweitzer is watching, and let's see if we can get some sort of program put together for spending timeouts at high V. <laughs> okay. And yes. Uh, Clarification also. So Cesar had a broken collarbone previous to the season that happened in soccer. And that's, I remembered as he, you know, we do little mini interviews uh, with each one of the kids. Um, and that was one of the things that he put in his was that he was recovering from the injury. And I can't believe I didn't connect those two right away. But So Aiden Artist will come on to attempt the kick. Artist, a junior for the Rams. Yet to make a field goal on the season. Left foot it. High snap. The ball is up. And the ball. Line drive kick goes through. And the Rams are celebrating on their way into the locker room. We've got plenty of uh, action left to come, though. Just 17-14. Rams on top. Halftime show coming your way next here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. This Muscatine Charities and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box, store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated. Call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. 
let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals. You're building the future. We're here to help. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected, and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs. Be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest, and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Musky Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Stark Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo incorporated skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support Big Brothers Big Sisters. 
At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone can make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo Incorporated, call us for your next remodel. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future, imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals, you're building the future. We're here to help. When water service lines get damaged, customers often call us first. Remember, MPW is responsible for the water main. The water service line from the main to your home belongs to you. Damage is usually unexpected and repairs can cost thousands. So don't wait until a problem occurs, be prepared. Check your homeowner's policy and see if it's covered. If not, third-party protection plans are available for water and sewer. MPW also offers the utility loan program with 0% interest and that may help. Learn more at mpw.org. physical therapy. Feel better, move forward. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Musky Sports are brought to you by Muscatine Power and Water, Muscatine Lawn and Power, Rivo Plumbing and Heating, Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine, Bear of Muscatine, Muscatine Church of Christ, H&J Cards, It Takes a Village Animal Rescue and Resources, Impact Fitness and Nutrition, Zach Fry at the Lee Agency, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Muscatine, Muscatine Symphony Orchestra, Josiah Anderson at Real Estate Resource Associates, Star Collectibles, Harper Cycling and Fitness, Muscatine Charities, and a special shout out to Mississippi Pearl Photography for all those great pictures of your Muscatine Muskies. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially in the strength and durability of our mowers. So you know your Hustler will stand the test of time. We think the difference is obvious. With our welded fabricated steel deck, high strength 11 gauge one piece frame, and the precision control of our smooth track steering, anyone can mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. 
From a clogged toilet to a complete sewer line replacement, Rivo is a modern plumbing company designed to respond quickly to all shapes and sizes of plumbing needs. Bringing in our heavy equipment to replace cracked gas lines or designing clever piping systems for new construction plumbing, a family-owned company that's reliably honest and remarkably affordable. Right here in Muscatine, all day long, every day of the week, Rivo Incorporated, skill, knowledge, and tools to solve the messiest problems. Roland Glumbine and Chris Anderson back here in beautiful Dubuque halftime. Right now, the senior Rams lead your Muskies 17-14. Checking out scores from around the state on this last week of the regular season. Centennial leads Urbandale 41-3. That was one of the games the Muskies needed. Cedar Falls leads Davenport West 30-8. That was the second one. Cedar Rapids Prairie has the lead on Iowa City West at halftime, 28 to eight. That was uh, three of the five games you needed to go your way in order to make the playoffs with the win. Now the other two are not going the Muskies way. Right now Liberty leads Jefferson 28 to nothing. And uh, Valley, uh, Marshalltown has just scored, but Valley still leads 42 to seven. So this likely the final game of the season for uh, the Muskies. You still want to win. You want to finish above 500. And, you know, I want to get this in here while we have a couple minutes before the second half kicks off. This is a weird playoff system in that it's a mathematical equation, which is fine. I love math. But 40% of it is your wins losses. You only control 40% of it. 60% of it is who you play. That just seems backwards. Like, at least should be 50% your wins losses. You would think. <laughs> you know, and actually, when you compare this to, like, say, the college system where your record is the driving factor, you know, because people talk about teams having a weak strength of schedule still making the college football playoff, right? And there are teams that play into that, right? Because they know that's how the system works and they can control their schedule. And so this one is almost the polar opposite, right, where it win all you want, it doesn't matter unless everybody else – and, does and what they're supposed to. It's screwy in, in a way that if you look at it like this, now it's a nine-piece puzzle, but if you just take one piece of the puzzle, right, one week of the season, it's better to play Southeast Polk and, and lose 70 to nothing than it is to go out and uh, who's a, a team that's like three and six or four and five. You beat, you beat one of those teams – and you're actually behind the team that lose, lost to Southeast Polk because they, cause, I, I, cause they've got to finish 9-0, and and that's the equation of a win. They're both 40%. A team that goes 9-0 and is the equation of one of your own wins. So in, in a way, it, it makes no sense, it, and it really kind of it plays well, into those teams in Des Moines that play all those good teams. Well, you know, okay, true. However... I'm also going to go back to a, a comment of control your own destiny, right? You go out and win games that you're supposed to win. You're going to end up where you're supposed to be nine times out of ten, right? Yeah, but you have to win. I mean, right. You, but again, you have to, you have to win because, again, here's the thing. Take the Muskies throughout this season, right? We kind of have always said five and in sort of a thing, or at least five, right? Yep. Let's say you go out and win seven. Are you in the playoffs? Yeah. You are. If you go out and win six, are you in the playoffs? Barely, yes. Barely, right. Okay. So have that, we beat, have that we beat feels Jefferson? Yes. That was right. the game. Who knew week one was the game? But well, who would have who would have <laughs> who would have known that you know the team that hadn't won in what three years was it twenty one twenty four in a row they'd lost is going to come out and just rip through this season. But as I think I was telling you off air before the game started. If you take the Muskie schedule last year, which is almost exactly what it is this year, the only difference is the Muskies played Cedar Rapids Jefferson instead of Bettendorf. So had they played Bettendorf instead of Jefferson and lost, right? Let, let's say they lost to Jefferson. Okay, they're going to lose to Bettendorf. Then they would finish, if, if everything goes the way it's going right now, they would have finished 16th in the standings just by that one game because – you know, although Bettendorf is losing tonight, so that's probably going to, like, they would have had to win tonight to make that point. But 
it, it's just it's that simple. And it, it's the weirdest thing because football is the only sport in the state of Iowa where you do not get to pick your own schedule. Right. The, the Athletic Association in Boone decides the schedule. Now, you make requests. Right, you get four, you get five games assigned to you, four from your grouping, and one other game that they kind of, which was Davenport North this year for Muscatine, and then you request teams that you'd like to play, and they kind of take that list and, and match up who they want to match up with. Which that's the system that got us to Johnston a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, it's, and and it's it's also a point where you need to maybe start scheduling different maybe throw a Davenport assumption on the schedule because classes don't matter. You can play, and Sioux City East does as well. Sioux City East plays three teams that are not 5A teams, and Sioux City East is going to the playoffs. Hey, so Now, you know, here's, here's Mr. Plummer. Lee Plummer has a comment from the YouTube side of things and simply says, the football team should run in conferences like everything else. Crazy. They, they did for years, right? Right, but if it's not broken, fix it and make it worse. Yeah. Or something. We could do a long podcast on this, but uh, we're ready to I start. I don't think anybody would listen. We're, I, I think Mr. Plummer would. I have faith in him. <laughs> and probably <laughs> Sammy. I mean, yeah, I'll bet we could. You know, I'll bet we could get Chris Meeker, who's hanging out there, who I've known since I was a minnow. Let's it would say. be therapeutic, if nothing else. And... Uh, Anyway, we're underway. Cesar Garedo lets it fly. Not a bad kickoff. Return from the three. Return team not really there yet, though, and a nice return out to about the 27. So it was a deep kick, a little bit more. The line drive variety allowed for a return, and the senior will start going left to right in this third quarter with the ball. So, yeah, it's just it's a matter of, you know, if – you can you can go two ways about it. You can schedule a request to play good programs, and then you you have to win those games. You have to win, or you or you have to win them all. If you go against the teams with and hope, yeah. Moore will pitch it a sloppy pitch right there. Meekall picks it up and is able to make something positive out of what could have been disastrous for the Rams. And, and you know, if you come back, win this game, you finish 5-4, and, and, and what really is the glaring reason you're not going to go to the playoffs is your win-loss. You're looking at going maybe 2-7 and seven this week, your opponents. It's... It's just it's hard in that it's something you can't control as a team, right? You can control your wins and losses. And, and again, you know, I'm going to go back to kind of the personal responsibility angle here. We win a couple of those games that we could have won. Maybe an injury goes a different way, ifs and buts. Yeah. We're Don't there, the right? Yeah. You, you point back and you look at those games and – I guess Jefferson was the one that was sort of there for the taking. Maybe if you, you got Brooke Lincoln and, and Ty yep. in uh, Iowa well, City, maybe you have a chance against West. Well, and even, you know, just. Me yeah. call again. Brought down in the backfield. There he is, Cooper Yao. Have a night, young man. Have a night. They just Almost. called him Cooper Ow well, in the I, press box. And I tell you, he's been delivering the Ow tonight for sure. I I tried to help at halftime with a quick correction on Frankie and Yao, and I said it's like Ow. <laughs> I think he – that's all right. He's trying. So you're to blame? <laughs> I, I may be to blame on that. <laughs> I apologize. Not a good punt. The ball will be touched at the 47 in some great field position here. Lord, I apologize. For the Muskies. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. Again, 
Yeah, Lee also pointed out that it's tough for the folks on the western side, like the Sioux City, Council Bluff, Mason Cities. There's not a lot of 4As up there, right? Five A's, no, or five A's, yeah. Pardon me. Um, wow, just got the ball handed off to Truesdale, and they had Gage wrapped up quickly. Nice play, though, picking up about five yards. It is, and they have to play those smaller schools. But it does, if you play the right smaller schools, it, it works in your benefit because they finish six and three, seven and two. That works great for your, you know, strength of schedule, and maybe right. you can get the win because they're a smaller it's, school. Is there a factor for the no, size? There is no. We could go out and play a 1A school, and it would count the same as a 5A school right now. Cooper Yao tries to get the corner and is pushed out of bounds at about the 45. Now, no one ever does that except, well, Pleasant Valley did play a 1A school the year of COVID because they were trying to pick up an opponent. Right. That's the only time that's really ever happened. But, yeah, there is no little mathematical fixation to help uh, if you play a smaller school. You just play a smaller school well I think I've found the solution find all the best 1A's request to <laughs> play them and off to the playoffs we go yeah and, and at least at least like I said Davenport Assumption they're a very good team mm -hmm. 3A team Davenport North played them this year and uh, Assumption won here's a quarterback keeper Curtis trying to get the first down he's close looks like he got it using the wheels there young man first down muskies you know, even, even North Scott, you know you go against North Scott, you, you might not get that win because they're really good, but you know they're going to be 7-2, and 8-1 and one every year. They're going to help your strength of schedule, and it's going to almost count like a win even if you lose that game. It, it, it seems backwards thinking, but that's the system that's in play right now in Iowa, and you got to learn to adapt to it mm -hmm. and maybe schedule differently. Yep, and that's, you know, it, it's all about understanding – and maximizing the system. Yes. Five yards coming uh, the musky way there. Offsides on the Rams. And again, that's just being smart, folks. That's not, you know, there's nothing less honorable about it, so to speak, or, or whatever. It's about a, a team and a school and an organization that is driving to be better. And the way you do that, make the playoffs, get your wins, build some excitement in the community, and your programs will grow. Give to Brookhart. Brookhart has the 30. Hard running. Looks to have another first down for the Muskies. Yeah, and, and there's no shame of playing Davenport Assumption. That's no. a very good school. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In, in fact, it's a much harder win than, say, Cedar Rapids Jefferson. You know, I mean. I, I would agree. Jefferson was a, a game that I don't know if the Muskies requested or not, but it, it had to be on the list of okay schools because that was one of the, you know, not the assigned games that was out there this year. So, and, and it's not a knock on Jefferson, but their numbers are bringing down other teams' strength of schedule. That's just the reality of it. Even though they've had a, a decent year, they won their first four games, going to lose their last five. And here's a... Slow developing play, and Curtis brought down, sacked back at the 35. Well, so then, you know, you wonder, what was the strategy in adding them? You know, are you thinking it's a a win? You know, it's just a W in the column, but is it a W that's even going to really affect yeah. the actual goal that you want to have at the end of the season? Because there's a team that lost 26 straight games, so if they had on all win nine, the, you get the win, but your strength of schedule goes 0-9, those cancel each other out. So, yeah, it, it's, you it's know, weird to have to think like that, but you got to have to think I, like that. I feel like, you know, I, I know someone who I feel like I can call in on this, and I, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb. My high school algebra teacher, Jean Andres, may well be watching at the moment. And if she is, I would absolutely love her to come up with an equation for this that we could just, like, plop down and go, okay, here's the mathematical way to do this. Yeah. It's there. It's and, and it's uh, hard because you never know year to year teams are going to have up and down years, right? I mean, Bettendorf had a great uh, year this year. Last year they didn't. So those are going to affect. Well, but 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 you have that's a, when you get your crystal ball out and roll with it. Here's a, a speaking of rolling, rolling out the throw maybe. Curtis lets it fly, and it's over the head of Ryland, just missing. 
the tight end. He was open, but fourth down, and out comes Garrido in the punting unit. No. Again, you're on the right side of the field, and if we can get one of these coffin corners, it will set up the defense nicely. You're going to be assigned the games you're assigned. But, yeah, with those other four, why not get a little creative? You know, the, the simple answer isn't always the right answer. And there's a punt inside the 20 at least, so does his job, and it'll be a long field upcoming for the Rams. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's tough when you play, and, and again, it's going to be a knock on the Davenport schools, but it's just the math of it lately. The, the three Davenport schools have not put up a lot of winning seasons lately, and, and we have been playing all three of them lately, and even though West could have made the playoffs with a win tonight, they're, they're losing. They're probably going to finish 5-4. and four. And the other two teams are going to finish with two wins. So you're, you're looking at right there is 9 and 18 on your strength of schedule by yep. playing those three. And, and that's kind of what it is every year with those three. It's right around 9 and 18. So that's a hole. You already put yourself in a negative nine situation, which is like taking away one of your wins. Here's a carry on first down. Defense is right there to stop them. A host of musky tacklers at the 20. I'll get off the soapbox on this. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because it's it, it's something I don't think the average fan really pays any attention to, and it's kind of backwards. Uh, you know, if it's a 50% one loss, then y you really you change things around, and, and the Muskies may be going to the playoffs this year. In fact, I think they would be if they have if they come back and win tonight. But that's not the math, and here's a rollout, and the pass completed down the sidelines. Nice run after catch by Andrew Tyson. And a first down for the Rams. But just to put a bow on it, I guess my whole point was it's kind of backwards to have who you play be more important than what you actually do on the field with your wins and losses. No disagreement there. All right, so first and 10 and more back to throw. Looking deep, no one there. Now he'll roll back this way and runs into a wall. Nice job by the Muskies. This has been kind of running all over the place and there's our man again Camden Furness he's having a nice game tonight as well seniors are going out in style and a uh, quick shout out uh, to Mr. Aiden Gray who had uh, surgery today or was it today or yesterday I don't remember what his dad said um, so obviously that ended his season as well so I uh, wanted to reach out to another one of the Muskies unfortunately not with us here tonight Moore will give off, and not much on the carry there as Robert Howard, the young sophomore, called up for this game tonight. Had a nice carry in the first half. Nothing there, though, and now third and long, and here's an opportunity for this defense. You, you figure you got a, a throwing play right here. This is time to go ball hawking a little bit and see if you can get a, an interception. Four receivers to each direction. Moore back to throw. Let's it go, and they'll let it go short. And the ball's fumbled out of bounds. It will stay with the Rams, but it is now a punting situation. Nice job there on the defensive side. Not allowing that play to go anywhere as Andrew Tyson brought down right away, stripped of the ball out of bounds. But, yeah, we, we mentioned... Bettendorf, they are losing to City High tonight, 28 to nothing. Wait, what? Yeah, Iowa City High, some pressure there. They get the kick away, and fair catch call for by Brookhart. <laughs> Almost looked like he waved his hands after he caught it, but 
nonetheless, fair catch. Just to sh uh, ensuring everyone saw that he did it early. He's like, does it after he catches it too. Uh, yeah, 28 nothing City High over Bettendorf tonight. Now, what was weird about that game is if Bettendorf had won, those two teams likely would have played again next week in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> but it looks like we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> now, one thing, folks, if you're sitting at home going, you know what, I really wish there was more musky football yet this season, I'm going to tell you in just a minute, there is more. Cooper Yell on the stretch play, brought down in the backfield. I am really sorry to Cooper Yao's family right now. I, I wholeheartedly apologize. I meant the best. Second down and 12. Yao goes in motion, fake to him, and here's the give back to Truesdale. They'll get back to the original line of scrimmage in a third and 10 upcoming for Muscatine. Still trying to find their first points since the first quarter. Should I leave him in suspense a little longer or should we tell him about the extra musky football game that they get? I, I, I feel like you need to tell them because it's not fair otherwise. Why yeah, would but you, life's why would not you be fair. cruel? Life's not fair. So, this Sunday, 2 o'clock. Yes. There'll be more Rusky football. You'll find out more after the play. Movement up front. Oh, whoops. They're, they're uh, pointing towards the Musky linemen. I didn't but see that. Let's but the see defense always points to the offense. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But if you, if you do a good job selling it sometimes... <laughs> So this Sunday, we actually have a really cool game that uh, I'm really proud that Discover Musketeen gets to be a part of. The fifth and sixth grade Muskies from Youth Sports Foundation. Uh, there's two teams. They'll be playing each other. I guess this time them pointing at the offensive line didn't matter. Yeah, it did, but it, it sold it. Um, the cool thing about this is Jim Miller has put together a – uh, childhood cancer awareness game that okay. will raise money for the Stead Family Children's Hospital up in Iowa City. Very nice. So we're going to come in and broadcast it. Brian Musell, myself, Chuck Van Heck will be there to make the calls. Al Hilton will be on the PA. Catch made out there well short of the first down. All happens... 2 o'clock Sunday out at the high school on the big field, right where the big boys play. And here's the really cool part. We reached out to some of the, the football team, and it sounds like there's going to be a high school football team student section there cheering on the young guys, just like they come out and cheer on their muskies. That would be very cool. Corrado this time going high in the air on the punt, but again, uh, he has got the spin working in his favor tonight. A huge roll around the 22-yard line. So a uh, big shout-out to uh, Cesar tonight and what he has done in yeah. replacing a five-star kicker slash punter in Jackson Othmer. Absolutely. Well, that sounds like a, a fun time, and I think the weather should cooperate from what I hear. It's going to yeah. be kind of a nice weekend. Yep, so you'll be able to watch it on Discover Muscatine, all the normal places where you can. You can share it out. Uh, we're going to do something cool just after the end of the first quarter. We're going to take after the Hawkeyes, maybe do a wave up to the kids at the Children's Hospital that are watching. Nice. Speaking of, did you get a chance to watch any of that uh, women's basketball game last Sunday? Uh, we watched a little bit of it, yes. That was that was pretty cool as well. Which, speaking of Hawkeye women's basketball, little teaser, there may be, courtesy of Discover Muscatine, some women's basketball tickets. You know those ones that are sold out, yeah. haven't been able to get them for yeah. – 
Discover Muscatine has some. We may be giving them away throughout the season here and there. So you want to make sure you stay tuned if you want to see Caitlin Clark and the rest of the Hawkeyes in person. And you should want to see that. Absolutely. Here's Howard on the run again. Howard, nowhere to go. The Muskies, again, coming up big on defense. This defense has played very well tonight. Almost feels like we're watching an Iowa football game. The defense and the special teams are, are carrying the day right now for the Muskies. And for as much of a, as we mentioned, as much of an explosive start as it was, it's really ground down. There's been no scoring here in the third quarter yet. Pass out on the flat to Tyson. And it looks like he's got enough for the first down. So a big conversion on third and seven. They get eight yards, and the Rams will keep this drive moving. You know, uh, one more note in that basketball game. I was, I was watching it, like the replay on Monday night or something, and uh, Caitlin Clark actually airballed a free throw. And, and she kind of did a check the wind <laughs> thing. And it's, it was a pretty breezy day, but it, it just – Definitely caused a bunch of chuckles. There's Howard again. Not much on first down. It's it's neat because you know we all grow up playing basketball out, outdoors, mm -hmm. and, and to see that kind of setting, it was something pretty cool. I remember when I was a kid, we had these thin cotton gloves for when it got cold, and we all had them. And you'd like wash them and shrink them down so they were even tighter, so that you at least had something on your hands. Going but it deep. Didn't mess with you. Lopez is there, and it's over everybody's head. Yeah, I was too tough for gloves. Or we were just outside in colder weather. Uh, I don't know about that. I grew up in Wisconsin. Speaking of Chris Anderson Young playing basketball, one of the guys I used to play basketball with, Adam Means, launched his podcast called Lost Treasures a couple weeks ago. I'm absolutely ecstatic to have been a part of that. Edwin Colon and myself got to head out to Cincinnati and help him. You can actually listen to the first episode on discovermuscatine.com right now. Well, after the game's over, of course. O obviously. obviously. Mil or Whoa. Oh, no horse. All right, yeah. no horse collar. So, Furness again there to make a defensive play. And a fourth down upcoming, and that should be a punting situation for the Rams, but uh, they'll do that when the fourth quarter begins. We have played three here tonight from Dubuque. The Rams have the lead, 17-14. to 14. We'll be right back. Have you heard the littlest things can make the biggest difference? Every day, bigs and littles are connecting in our community. Their time together can look a little different, but the goals and outcomes are the same. Littles are building confidence, forming better relationships, a sense of belonging, and achieving big goals. But there are more kids just like me who are still waiting. Will you join us in making more matches possible? Support big brothers, big sisters. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Rivo, the plumbing experts for Muscatine and surrounding areas has moved. Our new location at 1109 Grandview Avenue offers spacious parking and a large open showroom. Employing experienced plumbers and carpenters, we specialize in remodeling entire bathrooms and kitchens. Imagine the possibilities. Stylish new faucets, sinks, shower units, bathtubs, and more, along with tankless water heaters and gas fireplaces. We also provide complete residential and commercial plumbing services. Rivo and 
Start of the fourth quarter, the punt is away. A fair catch quickly called for and made at the 40 by Gavin Brookhart. Liberty now leads Cedar Rapids Jefferson 40 to nothing. The couch. Yeah, Liberty's probably going to miss the playoffs, though. The, the numbers hold. I, be, they're going to be really close because they will get a little boost because City is beating Bettendorf, but uh, I have them right now in 17th place. Linmar in 16th place. Neck and neck, those two, so. Wing formation, first down. Back to throw, Curtis. Curtis is gonna keep it on the ground and a nice carry before he is leveled to the ground, about a pickup of six yards on the play. Curtis will uh, learn to slide with a few more plays like that. Well, you, now remember folks, he's only a sophomore. So he's got two more years. This has been a tremendous season of experience and growth. Definitely nice to see him looking significantly more comfortable throwing the ball here towards the second half of the season. Looks bright for us under center. Here's Cooper Yao. Yao has some room to the 40. Needs to turn the corner to the 30, 20. Out of bounds around the 17 yard line. Cooper Yao adds to his big night. That'll be one for the highlight reel. Cooper continues to put the ow on the Rams. Oh boy. No good deed. First down. Chance to take the lead here. Beginning of the fourth quarter. Fan goes in motion. The give to Truesdale. Truesdale up the middle, spinning. And down around the 10. Nice carry by Dayton Truesdale. Second and two upcoming for this musky team. Looking to finish the year off with a two-game winning streak. Five wins in total. Thompson split off towards the top. The give to Truesdale. Truesdale near the first down marker. I think he has enough. They eyeball the chains and say, yeah, that's good enough. First down to Muskies. Complete opposite of last week's. Last week's crew needs to watch these guys. Last week's crew needed to carry a pocket slinky around with them to Check oh, first downs. Man. So first in goal. And keep your eyes on Cooper Yao. Here's the give to Brookhart. Brookhart has a chance to get in. He's down at the one yard line. Oh, man, another half a step, and he's in. Yep. It's one of those, you reach the ball out, you probably break the plane, but that's a risky move. Yeah, there were two guys falling all over, all over top of him, coming over the top of him. Nope. Second Smart down, play maybe the quarterback sneak here. We'll, we'll see. Instead, we have a whistle and a timeout upcoming. For the Rams, let's keep it here because the Muskies are on the doorstep early in this uh, fourth quarter and what appears to be our final broadcast of the football season. I, I literally just said not five minutes ago, we have one more Muskie broadcast this season. My final broadcast no, of the football true. season. Okay, there you go. Nobody asked me to be part of your Sunday fun day. <laughs> Look, I just I, got. <laughs> actually, I uh, no, my it, feelings no. are not hurt. It's all no. good. <laughs> Looks like it. I hey, oh. seriously, a, I know you're usually busy on Sundays. Are you not? Like that's your family time, right? I, 
and I, it's I'm a, just giving you a hard I, time, Chris. Just giving you a hard time. You're always more than welcome. All right, I'll hold you to that. We could always dial you in. I could, you know what? I can even set you up a feed so you could be watching and kind of call in a little bit and give us your thoughts on fifth and sixth grade YSF football. You need to take the basketball games on the road this year. Come up to Davenport North. and uh, I, we, we do actually uh, sixth we, grade next level go. basketball. Here we go. and uh, There it is. There it is. Sneaking in for the touchdown. Lincoln Brookhart scores the touchdown. They just brought him in the game, and he scored a touchdown. Look at that. That's why the big cheer from the opposite side. They call timeout to get Lincoln into the game, and the young man limping off a little bit right now, but they got him a touchdown, and that is that's a special moment right there. Uh, how much... Extra point is up and no good, but that's not as important right now than what we just saw. Lincoln Brookhart. How do you how do you end cap a season better than that? Well, the fans are are on their feet over there on the away side, cheering on that young man who very first play from scrimmage this year broke the ankle, mm -hmm. and and he's been there every step of the way cheering on his teammates on crutches on the scooter and, and, and you you mentioned he was off of crutches last week and looking yep. good and and didn't I, even notice he was suited up tonight i didn't i'll be honest i did and, not know he was going to be back in uniform tonight and that was just the, the perfect situation at the half yep. yard line they called that time out decided to, to honor that young man give him that opportunity and, and again, you know, folks, I got the opportunity to sit down and sit with the three brothers uh, that are seniors and just tremendous kids. You can go back and watch, I believe, it was the Davenport West halftime uh, where we played out that interview. But great kids, um, great family. What it is to be musky football is exemplified by those three boys. As a matter of fact, so much so that I believe it was two games ago, Lincoln got my player of the game from the injured reserve he did. West. He did. The young man deserved that moment right there. So happy to see him score a touchdown on his final night in a musky football uniform. Go out to the 22. I'll admit, I I saw him run out there and set up, and I'm like, is that number 23? And, and I didn't want to say anything because it didn't seem like that would be a reality, but sure enough. And you could tell just how much he means to this team, the way that offensive line fired off and then the way they all celebrated running off that field. Yep. There was no way he was not going to score on that play. Now, you know what's interesting about this? And I'm even, I was literally on the phone with Karen yesterday, day before. Pass deep, up for grabs. It's short. It's got a it chance to be picked. And oh. Nope. So maybe it was a Sebastian top Sebastian Gabor there on the pass breakup. Give to Robert Howard and third and long upcoming. Defense a chance to get off the field. With 8.50 left in this fourth quarter.
Man goes in motion. Back to throw is Moore. Moore has his man, Tyson. Tyson has the first down. Hit hard by Darnell and then finished off by Brookhart. You know, this is the time of a game like this that always gets exciting because the teams start playing completely differently than they have the first three and a half quarters, right? As they want to move the ball, they're going to pass more. Can our defense adjust to that? Do they get gobbled up? This is where it's going to get fun. So the defense needs to come up again as the ball is into Muskie territory. Muskies have their first lead of the night, 20 to 17. Here's the quarterback keeper, Moore. Aiden Lopez wrangles him out of bounds around the 41. You know, Aiden's been a really strong, I don't want to say silent piece of this Muskie team this year, but every time they've needed an above average consistent play, he's there. Yeah, definitely one of the unsung heroes of this team. Moore back to throw, doesn't have the deep route, pulls it down, plenty of time, now has some pressure, and brought down Cooper, yeah, the ball's fumbled. Furness had it, lost it, now it's still loose. Are they saying he was down? Nobody is uh, honoring Let's the fumble it. part of it, so they are going to mark him down. Let's take another look at that, folks. And it was absolutely out before his knee went down. So uh, we... Gave some kudos to this officiating crew a minute ago, but they missed that one. And that would have been a musky ball on the fumble recovery. Moore back to throw, Moore still looking, Moore dancing around out there, looks for somebody to throw it to, and the receiver makes the catch under heavy duress, short of the first down, but still about, four, well, about 13, 14 yards there on third and 19. Players slow to get up for senior. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Did we mention quality matters? Welcome to our cut quality center. Let's take a closer look. Our mowers provide superior laser precision cut quality for a perfectly manicured lawn. Let's break this down in science terms. This grass is cut good. This grass is cut not as good. Hustler turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Welcome to the future. Imagined by visionaries, championed by leaders, and focused on results. Made real through hard work and a determination to build the things that people count on. Places where ideas are born, where progress fuels growth and strengthens communities. It's work that makes a difference. United Rentals. You're building the future. We're here to help. Back here in Dubuque, Drew Francis, the injured Ram, walked off the field under his own power. Fourth down and a five. Big play right here. Ram's going to go for it. Man goes in motion. Moore back to throw. Moore under pressure. Moore lets it fly. The ball is oh. caught. 
unbelievable effort out there. Aiden Lopez looked to have that defended pretty well. But the receiver worked his way back to the ball and uh, just outfought the defense. That's Dukes, Marshawn Dukes on the catch. And the Rams keep this drive alive as the clock reaches the midway point of the fourth quarter. Now remember, both teams are without their first string kickers here. So as you see the Rams get closer and closer to the red zone, you are, are we gonna see a different strategy, do you think? It, it depends on the down and distance, I'm guessing. But uh, I mean, do you think they're gonna be more aggressive overall since they don't have their kicker on the Again, I think they're going to be playing. Look how they started this game tonight with the halfback option pass. Very this true. is their Super Bowl right now. And this time, Moore slips and falls down. He tried to make another one of those fancy cuts that he's made all night. His feet didn't work that time in a long third down upcoming now for the Rams. Clock still ticking down to about five minutes to go. You know, and I'm sure Coach Hawkins has been drilling into the boys this week to leave absolutely nothing on that field, and I have no doubt that they will do just that. Rams are going to call yet another timeout. I believe that's their second of the half. That will leave them with one. We have a, another close ball game. We've had some some doozies this year in the blowout category, but the last couple weeks have been a lot of fun. Of course, it's only fun if you get the W, right? It's a long bus ride home if you don't tonight. It's a long bus ride home either way. Always longer when you lose, Chris. I, I, I agree. It's also a lot quieter. Yeah. Remember a couple of those. So third and nine upcoming for the Rams. Dukes will split off to the, the top of your screen. Me call in the slot. Tyson towards the bottom. Hall goes in motion. Back to throw more. More steps up. Has a lane. He's got to get through one defender and can't. Oh, there was an opening there for a moment. Nice job, Cesar Guerrero, of closing that hole. And now fourth down upcoming. This would be about a 39 yard field goal. And I think the offense will stay on the field here. They did make field goal earlier, but it was anything uh, but pretty. So here we go. This could be the ball game. Man goes in motion is Hall. They'll flood the top of your screen and throw it back towards the bottom, and Lopez is going to get oh. called for interference. Oh, you got to allow the defender a pack to the ball. He was making a play to the ball. We're going to take a look at this again, folks. I, I, I'm not sure where that one's coming from. Well, it is called on the Muskies, and perhaps that's karma from last week. I don't know, but it yeah, very well could be. Muskies, uh, if he didn't tune in last week, kind of gifted a uh, pass interference call on the last minute drive where they would go down and tie the game eventually win in overtime that one a bit of a phantom call as well but it will be an automatic first down almost a fourth down incompletion wow here's quarterback somehow staying on his feet for a moment but help is on the way and the muskies bring down dalen moore for a loss on the play 
Clock down under four minutes now. Again, the Muskies, uh, or excuse me, the Rams, well, they both are playing without their starting kicker. Aiden Artist is practicing his uh, field goals right now on the sidelines. Kicked one earlier tonight. Here's Moore, swings it out to Hall. Hall trying to get the corner. Hall has the corner. Hall has a lane to the end zone. Hall runs over to the fender, and Senior has scored to take a fourth quarter lead. Mikal would not be denied. I mean, he actually ran over one of his own blockers to get across the end zone there, folks. 23-20, pending the artist extra point. And a big extra point at that. Sammy Motley, watch the language there, ma'am. You know we have zero tolerance. High snap, the kick is down, the kick is through. That was his best kick of the night. Plenty of distance on that, and the Rams have a four-point lead. 3.14 to go. Muscatine, the scoreboard show, still has two timeouts. They did use the one earlier to get Lincoln Brookhart into the game, so that is correct. Two timeouts, 3.14 left. And uh, perhaps last chance of the season to get that kick return touchdown. That we've so patiently waited for and expected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Santa. We've been patient. We've been we've been good for the most good. part. Yeah. Well, Thompson's back there. Yao is back there. Both very capable of something magical right here. Artist will put the ball down at the 40 on the near hash. He's kicked it straight pretty much tonight, which would be Thompson. This uh, ground ball heading towards the sidelines. Thompson will pick it up. Needs some blockers, gotta find that wall. And uh, still on his feet out to about the 26, seven, maybe 27 yard line, sure. So a long way to go. And a short time to get there. Well, we just had a quick question about the East playoffs. East bound and down, yeah, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> quick question about the playoffs. Could you kind of run through your quick little scenarios on where we're actually at right now? For for the Muskies? For the Muskies, yep. They're, they're done. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, they needed six things to happen tonight. They needed to win this game. Um, they needed Centennial win, Centennial's winning. They needed Davenport West to lose to Cedar Falls. That's happening. The problem is Marshalltown uh, did not pull off the upset of upsets. Here's Brookhart on the carry out to about the 30. Uh, they were down 42-7 to seven in the fourth quarter there. Needed Marshalltown to win tonight. Also needed uh, Jefferson to beat Liberty, and Liberty is winning that game. 40 to nothing. So those are the two things that are going to keep the Muskies out of the playoffs, even if they come back to win tonight. That was a lot quicker than you've done in the past. When I have to be. Here's the carry by Brookhart. Brookhart has the first down. And that's all you need right now. First down, still two and a half to go. You got to go quickly, but you, you don't have to go completely no huddle yet. Wishbone formation, Thompson split off towards the top. The turn, the give to Brookhart. Brookhart um, brought down uh, after a gain of maybe one. And those are the kind of plays that hurt right there. So second down and nine, the clock is coming to a stop because uh, a player down, we'll keep it here on this one. We'll talk a little strategy. Second and nine, you almost time to put the ball in the air. 
a bit, you think? I would think you'd almost have to. I mean, you are in a, a four-down territory right now, so the the one yard didn't hurt you so much there. But I, it's it's going to be eating away at the clock if you're not. So I think you almost have to. You almost have to keep the ball in the air as much as absolutely possible, and and obviously to the sides of the field, if you're. Well, first down stops the clock, so that works to your advantage. Evan Frankie was the uh, injured player. He walked off under his own power. They do wind the clock, however. So we're uh, down to two minutes to go right now. You got to go 60 yards. Turn, looking to throw. Has the man, Cooper Yao. Yao tiptoes his way down the sidelines and... Steps out of bounds about three yards shy of the first down. Yeah, wide open on that. The ball out to the 47. Got to get to midfield. Third and three. Yao did get out of bounds. That stops the clock. I do like this as an experience builder for our young quarterback as well, though. This is the kind of drive you want him to be able to look back on over the next couple years. Here's the give, and that's going to be short of the first down, and now you might want to take one of your timeouts to make sure you have the right play on fourth down. The clock is continuing to tick, and now finally Coach Hawkins. Yeah, because at this point, this is your season. You have nothing left to... So You've got to make sure you have the perfect play here and your, be and your best play. You need your best three-yard play right here. So what is the best three-yard play? I, I would hand I, off the gal right now myself. I, I think you almost have to. I mean, well, I mean, I guess you don't have to, obviously. But I, I think if there's one guy in the backfield, I don't know. I mean, he's, Burkhart's, he's, Burkhart's done a good job when you need short he's yardage. He's done a good job, but, but Yao's had a night. And right. if I'm going to put the whole game on someone's shoulders right now, I'm going to put it. On Cooper Yao. So here you go, fourth down and a long two yards to keep this drive going. The clock at 137. You have one timeout in your back pocket, but that means nothing if you can't get to midfield on this play. Here's the give, and there's the first down, barely. That should stop the clock and does. So Dayton Truesdale got the carry and got just enough to move the sticks. You got to hurry, though. They're going to wind the clock. And, you know, Truesdale's another good decision there, honestly. I mean, you look at how he stepped up at West and a couple of those other games early in the season. 125 left and counting. The Muskies still huddling. Got to go with a little more urgency right now, boys. Back to throw. Gage under pressure. Let's it fly. Has a man out there. And the ball is caught. First down, Muskies. Well, a lot of air under that ball. Holy cow. Thompson was wide open, and the ball just, just got there in the nick of time. Angle. That was like almost straight volcano up. And got out of bounds to stop the clock. One eleven left. Now you're all the way down to the 31, and... Your odds go up a little bit. If the old goal does you no good here, it's end zone or bust. Double wing formation. Yao in motion. A man moves uh -oh. early, and that's going to be five-yard penalty. I believe either the official's pointing towards the defense. I'm not sure on this. Yeah, the initial indication was, it, was towards the defense. So the defense moved first, and that's the break right there. That will mark it off five yards. Yeah, both teams moved on it, but the defense caught first with their hand in the cookie jar, and that moves it down to the 26, and a free five yards with the clock stopped. Well, Gage Curtis is an old pro at this now after what he went through last week. 
and uh, the Rams are going to burn their final timeout. Or no, they, has, they still have one left, so that's their second timeout, according to the scoreboard. So they'll talk over on defense, and now if you're the offense, you need to kind of have two plays called right here. You can run the ball. I'm okay with that because the first down stops the clock, but you need to have that second play called and get right up to the line of scrimmage, especially if you don't make the first down here. Time is uh, becoming a, an issue very quickly in this ball game. Now, again, here, you have. do you have time to throw four passes at the end zone from the 30-yard line? Of course you do. But the reality is that's not the most likely thing to get you into the end zone. And, you know, the other thing is at this point, and this is 100% Chris' strategy here, I know there's got to be some sort of play that these guys are comfortable with, whatever it is they run. It's a 17-yard thing. It's a 13-yard thing. How do you get to that position on the field to put them in their most confident position to get across the goal line? I thought for sure we were, we were going to get the Tecmo reference right there. We haven't had one yet tonight. I was saving it. Oh. I was saving it. All right, here we go. First and five. Wing formation. Yao in motion. Here's the give. First man through. Did he lose the ball? He lost the ball. Who got it? The Rams think they have it. They're still looking on the bottom of the pile. Let's take another look at it here. Whose ball is it? They still have not made a call. And now they have. As big number 78 comes away with the football. And it will be Rams ball, and that will put a bow on it tonight. Cooper Yow slow to get up. That's more frustration than it is anything injury-wise. All the players kind of uh, slow to go off the field right now. Tough way to, to lose that. They were driving. They had the first down inside the 20-yard line. But turnovers have been the story tonight. Was that the fourth turnover against Muscatine? Yep. Three early on, because yeah, they went into halftime with three turnovers, only down by three. Only one timeout left for Senior. It will be just maybe three snaps of the ball right now. for Dalen Moore. Moore takes the oh, first, and that's no. not at all. What, what is? Well, this has been a story all season long, too, with these guys. Unfortunately, when things are not going the Muskies' way, frustrations kind of boil over. It's happened a few times this year, and, and it happened right there as... Yeah. Yep. So that was Andy Frankie with the extracurriculars. Now some what, more what, pushing. What are we? And, and, you know. You're, you're not going to get there. Yep. I, I can respect the fight till the end comment here. However. Frank. And Frankie's been taken out of the game right practicality, now. Practicality, you know. When the fall is all that lo is left, the fall matters a great deal. Last snap, unless Muskies want to call their timeout. And uh, they do not. And so the clock will run out, and Senior will finish the season uh, with two straight two. victories. 
after losing their first seven games. Oh, I apologize. I just noticed their record. It was seven and one on the screen. It was one and seven. My apologies. So they do finish two and seven. The Muskies lose a heartbreaker tonight and will finish things up at four and five on the year. So Roland, as we wrap up our last broadcast here, yeah, not counting the fifth and sixth grade cancer awareness YSF football game this Sunday at two o'clock on Discover Muscatine, not counting that, as you look back over the season, yeah, what do you take away from musky football? Well, there were some good things, right? There was some some bright spots out there, and then there was some things that still make you scratch your head. You know, it, it. this began, honestly, as the season of Ty Kozad. We all kind of w couldn't wait to see what kind of encore after the amazing record-breaking year we had last year. And the season started really in unbelievable fashion, not only losing Ty, but losing Lincoln in those first two plays. And it's been a battle ever since. You know, it's, it's been a team trying to find its identity and battle back and, and you've seen some players step up I, I like what i saw from gage curtis mm -hmm. a lot of growth there you know i love what i saw from a lot of these seniors uh, especially you know cooper yow uh, what, what we've seen from him and camden know. furnace uh, on the defense always floating around there and you know nico and nico had his moments and there was there's a lot to hang, you know, there's a lot to hang your hat on and to hold your head up high about. And right now, you know, those guys are feeling down and it's Gavin Brokhart's talking to him a little bit. And that, that's important, you know. Was lead, it Gavin? Leadership. Actually, I think that's Lincoln. No, no, no Lincoln, that was Gavin. Pardon me. That was now Gavin. Lincoln stepped, sorry. So, you know, and, and tonight, you know, I love that Lincoln Brokhart scored that touchdown. That was one of the highlights of the season for him to, to be able to come back from a broken ankle yep. and, and knowing what this young man has given to this program throughout his career and the heartbreak he, he fell, felt in that first game, but not to give up, right? Yep. I mean, there's a lesson right there I, yeah. in that exact moment. Lincoln Brokar never gave up you know, fought, fought, fought to get back on this field and got his moment tonight. So, you know, I, I, I like player of the game. I like Cooper and Lincoln both, really, because okay. I, I think they both right. deserve it. I'm in. I'm all in for that. You know, as for what next year holds, uh, I, I don't know. This is a, a program that is on the cusp, but it, it just needs to take that next step. Yep. And We're going to need to pull up some sophomores that are going to need to grow. They're going to need to be able to fill some pretty significant holes that these seniors are going to leave. You know, Jackson Othmer, we've talked about all season and, and yet tonight. It's, that's a big hole to fill. A lot of, you know, when you get your defense, being able to play from the 20 every kickoff, you're set. Yep. And, you know, I mean, obviously there's a huge hole at running back. And I, I think we've seen some nice things from Sebastian Gabor. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's the guy, then I, I like that. He's, he's shown some promise, so we'll see. You know, you have a quarterback who's going to have to take a leadership role next year as a junior because he's, he's got that year now. And But it, it's a program definitely, like, just right there at, at the crossroads. Hey. In which direction do they go? And they're, they're going to need leadership. They're going to need leadership of players and they're going to need leadership of coaching right now to make that right decisions and make sure the the ship keeps going in the right way mm -hmm. because it, i mean to be honest this was not what anybody <laughs> hoped for right we said playoff right. or bust and, and i think that was the feeling not just with us but those guys down there in uniform mm -hmm. too this was you know anything short of the playoffs was not going to be acceptable and and, and there you and, have it and and they were so close going through you know as we've mentioned ad nauseum at some points about the injuries yeah. that they've faced and what they've had to come through to be still that close to what the the original goal was is a, a testament to there's never been any question that these kids play with passion 
Right. N- never. Like too much at a time. Yeah, we right. saw that. We saw that. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and that's they they wanted it. There was no lack of want. No. And that's good. That's that's because yep. if you have lack of want, you have no chance. Right. So that's not a problem here. Uh, you know, and it, it was just could you come back from those two injuries on the first play? And and they've been battling that every year and what they did at Central up at Brady Street and what they did last week, you know, a testament that, that's not easy. When you lose those two, that is not easy and you know, it would have been fun to see what this team could have been with number uh, you know, 23 and number 24 out there all season long. I think the playoffs would have happened, but it, that's not how the world works, as we know. No, but, you know, several of them are going to be playing on Saturdays next year, you know, and that's a testament to everything that they've put in over the last, you know, geez, most of them have been playing since they were, what, fourth, fifth, sixth grade? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a culmination. It's a season that, you know, I don't think anybody's going to forget this season anytime soon. No, that game tonight, the game last week, there was a lot of fun moments, you know. And, and yeah, tonight isn't fun, but, you know, I'm still thinking about Lincoln's touchdown, and that's what I'm yeah. going to take from tonight, okay? But it, they weren't making the playoffs even if they won. Yep. So, yeah, I know you want to finish over 500. I know you want to win every game. That's hard. But as the coaches talk to him right now, y- you take your victories. And, and that that young man and that moment he had, that's a team victory right there. Absolutely it is. So, you know, that's that's what I take from tonight. And uh, we'll see what the future holds. But uh, it was definitely a roller coaster ride all year long. Yes, it was. And thank you for going along with us, folks. It's been an absolute blast, as always. Um, I'm extremely proud of what we're able to do here. Um, it's an absolutely tremendous thrill, and I'm I'm privileged to be able to do this and help bring this to you guys. Um, yeah, I'll quit being sappy. And to remind you to come in on Sunday at 2 o'clock and watch some more Muskie football. The little guys. Come join yes, this football the, the, team that's going to be here watching the, the little guys. The future of the Muskies, right? Yep, yep. and, you know, because it is, again, folks – these are programs that you've got to build from youth up. And, you know, we talked with the Brookhearts about what, like, YSF football meant to them. And, you know, all these kids start playing in those programs. And this is the culmination that starts with these fifth and sixth grade games, third and fourth. And, you know, you support those kids early, support them often, and holy cow, we could build something great. No doubt about it, as the coaches continue to talk out there to this team and, uh, you know, everyone's – there's some heads hanging a little bit. You're going to get that, but that's good to see right now. That's that's lessons to be learned tonight, everything, positive, negative. There's a lesson in it. And tonight came up the wrong way. The season kind of came up the wrong way. But uh, where you go from here is what's important. And like you said, a lot of these seniors will see Ty somewhere next – Next year, we'll see a lot of these other guys, Jackson and, and a few others next year somewhere, and it'll be fun to see them at the next level and what they can do. You know, life goes on. It until, does. Until it doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> That is the way to leave it, folks. I think <laughs> if that is not the ultimate period to this season, I don't know what is. All right. Well, I want to thank all the fans for, for tuning in and and most of them being nice to us. Yeah, it's and uh, it. glad we could do this for you guys. And yep. Not many schools have this, folks. I mean, I, I don't know really too many others. I think I think there's a, a CIML broadcast over in Des Moines, but that's about it. You don't get football for free with semi-competent announcers <laughs> on the high school level <laughs> in the state of Iowa. Mostly you have to pay per view. Yep. Um, and when it get, works. You get uh, no announcers and – really camera work that's not great ever so uh, consider yourselves lucky you have a, a man here in Chris Anderson that cares a lot about this community and about this school and it's been fun to uh, been on the ride here for the last couple years and and probably be back next year we'll see yeah so uh, yeah that that's about it unless you want to add anything else one, one last thing don't forget Sunday at 2 o'clock there you go we'll be around again but yeah. 
There you Have go. a great weekend, folks. Again, thanks for being along with us on this ride. It's been an absolute blast. We will have the basketball schedules, uh, basketball, wrestling, winter uh, sports coverage schedules out here shortly. Uh, so stay tuned for that, which will be myself and Toby Lehman bringing you basketball and wrestling. All right. Well, for Chris Anderson and the rest of the crew, once again, the final score tonight, Dubuque Sr., Wins this one 24 to 20 over Muscatine. I'm Roland Glenbine. This has been a presentation of the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Have a great night, everybody.